Shazam! I have again returned from my life of fighting crime to review The Binding of Isaac and its subsequent expansion, Wrath of the Lamb. You might remember this developer's previous awesomeness. At first, this might look like some iPhone app, but I assure you it's a full game, and I'll let you know just from the get-go that this was one of my Game of the Year nominees for 2011. That's how good it is. It wasn't my Game of the Year. That was Dead Space 2. But it basically came down to those two. And why that is, is something important that we need to recognize. Fun. Yes, 2011 had huge, vistaed epics that were pretty darn purdy, but as we've recognized before, a game, much like a person, should strive to be more than the sum of its parts. Never before has that been more true than in a game that randomizes every motherfucking part. Level layout, enemy type, population variation, items, bosses, stores, secrets, etc., bitches, etc. That constantly changing gameplay is so crack addictive that I swear to Sagan this is true. The first time I played The Binding of Isaac, I played it for 23 hours straight. And that's not a lie, look at my face. Would that face lie to you? The first thing you'll notice here is a not too subtle similarity from meow to meow. Although beyond the need for bombs and coins, the likeness to Zelda is pretty skin deep. And that brings us to meow. Can anyone tell me what this is? Very good. This is a rogue game. Basically non-commercial digital follow-ups to D&D that started popping up on early PC computers around the early 80s. By the 90s, bam. Color bitches. These games have randomly generated dungeons, turn-based fighting, yada yada yada. Some of you are thinking, hey, that sounds like Diablo. That's because Diablo was a rogue clone with pretty graphics. My favorite of these would ultimately be Angband. It's one of those games that I can never go more than a year or two without playing a little bit, and it's free. Link, bitches. If you at all enjoy things that are enjoyable, I would recommend farting around in Angband. And even with the built-in tile set graphics, I wouldn't recommend them. It's not as easy to tell what your enemy is right away. Keep it old school. And just for the record, I'm not being old school, just for the sake of schooliness. When I started playing these games, they were still black and white, and it was called Moria. But color takes you from meow to meow. And now I know what kind of trolls these meow. And yes, you can turn off single deaths only. Pussy. <laughs> Reproducing lousy XP farming. <sighs> As the title suggests, the game is modeled after the biblical tale of the Binding of Isaac, in which God is feeling really insecure and tries to scare a farmer into sacrificing his son to him so that he could feel better about himself. I will bless those who bless you, and will curse anyone who curses you. Fuck you! Make a man try and kill his son just so you can feel all big? But real gangsta ass niggas don't flex nuts, cause real gangsta ass niggas know they got it. But at the last second, God let Abraham know it was all just some Ashton Kutcher shit, and everyone could go home minus a goat. To which his flock responded, Good one, Lord. Val really got us with that one. P.S. Please stop being a dick all the time. So Isaac's mother is watching Glenn Beck when she hears God's voice. Isaac's soul is still corrupt. He needs to be cut off from all that is evil in this world and confess his sins. I will follow your instructions, Lord. I have faith in thee. And where we used to call people that hear voices saviors, we now call them paranoid schizophrenics. Long story short, this time Isaac was smart enough to get the fuck out of Dodge, and the game you play is basically his escape under the house. Threw himself down into the unknown depths below. You can also play as other biblical characters once you unlock them. I think Kane's the best, because he starts with a lucky foot. I know that balance is a weird thing to bring up in a randomly generated game, but the money to bomb to key ratio is always crucial and always different. And since no two runs are the same, there's no one strategy to cheap out on. I know this looks like a casual game from the art design, but it's not, and it's not at all easy. And you only get one life. One. So you die and everything resets. I love the way that items change your appearance, so you end up like a different mutant every time. Especially good items that level up your firing rate, firing distance, firing power, those are the most important ones. Some items damage you. Like any rogue game, until you try it, you don't really know what it does. The difficulty might be a bit steeper for those who never charted good old bullet hell, like us 8-bit veterans. Oh, skills, bitch, skills, can't touch these skills! Can't touch this. Can't touch this. You can't touch this. Break it down. Stop. Hammer time. Touch this. 
Yeah, I has them. Unlike other games, the expansion isn't an extra few levels or added content to the end of the game. It's just a threefold increase of ingredients to the game. Enemies, items, bosses, etc. So everything you're seeing here is both the original Binding of Isaac and the expansion Wrath of the Lambs combined. Since Isaac is only five bucks and Wrath of the Lambs is three, if you haven't shelled out the eight bucks it costs to play the full game, punch yourself. It's better than paying $60 for a game that doesn't even fucking work. <coughs> Hmm. Tron flashback. <laughs> Kick ass music doesn't hurt either. Not that everything here is perfect, in fact, the failings this game does have are kind of weak ones. The options are limited to lower resolutions, limited aspect ratios, the full screen barely works, and the game, which wants you to use a controller, doesn't have options for one. Just a message saying Google this app to connect a gamepad. These kind of options aren't just lazy, but borderline unprofessional. On top of which, X Patter is much better than Joy to Key. And I wouldn't play this with a keyboard if you put a gun in my head. Now, I'm usually a stickler for not showing much beyond the first hours of the game, but Isaac is different for a few reasons. Mainly, you can't spoil a game that's different every time. And if you do beat it, you'll do so in an hour. So, in catering to my own ego, I now present to you the most overpowered beatdown of Mom's Heart ever. So awesome, so awesome! Can you handle my awesome? Uh, it's getting to be about that time. Katie Holmes Award. Cause she saw the crazy. Take all else happening in Scientology from the creation of new ideal orgs to busting off the top of the bridge, and here is the crucial element for planetary clearing. And got the fuck out of Dodge. Run, Katie, run! Run, Katie, run! Fuck you.